guest has $125 million worth of experience in one part of the sector, and a part that you may not often think of. He's head of a family office. He has $1.8 billion total to manage. Paul Pagnano is with us. He is the founder and managing director of High Towers Pagnano Carp Group. He is with us from D.C. So, Paul, you have, it seems like, 5 to 10 percent of your overall portfolio in real estate. What are some of the areas that maybe investors don't consider enough but that can give so-called yield strong returns right now? We like four areas within the real estate market. Um, medical facilities, storage facilities, senior living, and student housing. So I'm actually curious about the student housing. Why does this make sense and how are you able to take advantage of other people not thinking about this? There are a couple of very, very strong reasons. One is the demographics are, are overwhelming. The next 10 years, we're going to have approximately 4 million children turning the age of 18. And the statistics now are 70 to 80 percent are going to post uh, to, to college. And so with 4 million students turning that age, there's just not enough housing right now to house them all at the, at the universities. The second reason is the area is very fragmented. The top 25 investors in the student housing only own about 4% of the market. So that's an opportunity. Uh, so, Paul, I want to ask you, if there's not enough housing now for students, we're hearing in some cases sometimes a backlash to people going to four-year colleges or actually moving from their parents' homes just because the economy has changed so much. What if more kids do stay home? What if more kids go to a community college? Or as uh, Peter Thiel, famous investor out in Silicon Valley, has said, for some kids, maybe they don't need to go to school. What if that trend changes? Does that change your investment? thesis so um, that, that's a great question and we expect some of that to occur um, which would would be healthy for the overall economy and for students not incurring as much debt but we still believe even with the, the status quo the amount of housing that is available for students um, the opportunities are, are, are abound now, you also mentioned something that seems to apply to demographics shifting, and that is the medical care, and I'm assuming the tie-in to the baby booming generation. Yes. Um, there are about 8,000 people a day that are turning the age 65 or older. And when, uh, when you turn age 65, you're three times as likely to go see a doctor than when you're in your 30s or 40s. So the need for that care is just, just increasing, and uh, hence we like, we like that space. So basically you think that more doctors are going to be opening up more offices or there's going to be more health care centers to address the needs of an aging population? Yes. Okay. That, will be, that, that is the trend, and we believe that trend will continue. As well as senior living, which also seems that for people who can no longer remain independent, they have to have somewhere to be. Yes, that's, that's exactly right. As people are getting older, they really like the senior living centers where everything is provided for them. They have uh, health care, medical facilities right there, and uh, also a social setting. And awful, also a social setting. I'm noticing, too, with the portfolio, Paul, you have still a good part in fixed income. It's pretty much balanced between fixed income and equities. What is the tone like? How do you see managing risk right now? that's a big part of your job so we uh, have a, a higher amount of cash than we normally do and we are more concerned by a lot of the headwinds that exist so there's three major things on the horizon we have the fiscal cliff so at the end of this year the bush tax cuts will be expiring so there's uncertainty as to what's going to happen with the tax picture secondly we have the, the global debt picture there's an estimate of 600 to 700 trillion dollars of global debt. And when you have that much debt, economies slow down. And the third is just that. You have Europe that's in a recession. You have China and the United States, the three largest growth engines. Economies are all slowing down. So we're very cautious right now.
Paul, we thank you very much. Thanks for the time. Thanks for the insight into the real estate investment choices you are considering and that you are, in fact, investing in. Paul Pagnato joining us there from our D.C. Bureau. He is with the Hightower Pagnato Cap Group. We are back in just two minutes. Coming up, hailing a taxi going virtual. We're going to be sitting down with the co-founder of a new app. It is called Zabcab, and it lets your smartphone do all the work.